Once I've modeled the slider component in its own window, I'll bring it into the mechanism assembly. Since I have both the slider component and the mechanism assembly open, I'll tile the SOLIDWORKS window so I can see both files. Then I'll drag the cylindrical face of the slider into the assembly window over the large cylindrical face that it mates to. This activates a smart mate, and the slider should snap into place. If it's not oriented correctly, I can press the tab key to flip the part the other way. The result of this smart mate is a concentric mate between the parts. If I drag the slider, you can see that it's free to slide along the cutout, but it can also rotate. To prevent this motion, and more importantly to make the position of the slider match the exam illustration, I have to add two more mates. I'll select the top flat face of the block and the right plane of the slider and add a parallel mate. If you're wondering why I use the right reference plane instead of the one of the small flat faces of the rectangular cutout, here's my reasoning. I know future exam questions will ask me to make design changes. I just don't know what those changes will be. If I tie the positioning of this part to a minor feature like the cutout, which I could easily be asked to change later, I'll have to come back and make a change to the parallel mate. If I use the right reference plane instead, then the slider's position will be unaffected by changes to the cutout. At this point, the slider component can only slide back and forth. According to the illustration, it should be positioned with its flat face flush against the block. I'll add a coincident mate, and the slider's position is fully defined. Now I can move on and add the in-context relation to make the diameter of the slider match the size of the cutout.